Hi guys, welcome to another painting walkthrough. As always, really appreciate um, you supporting me. Got a really special image today. Um, if you're a fan of Michael Jackson, then I'm sure you're going to like it. If you're not, sorry. Um, but I, I just sort of I was struck by an idea um, not so long ago. Uh, I just thought about the Michael Jackson uh, video for Beat It. And I just thought, I wonder, because it's got that kind of retro 80s feel to it, obviously, because it was from the 80s. I wonder if uh, it'd be nice if Anya turned up to that. You know, my character, original character, turns up to the pool hall where uh, Michael Jackson was uh, dancing in the beginning of it. And then I thought, well, why not have Michael Jackson there as well? Um, so I got a reference image, as you can see on the right there, just for colours and, and just, um, just to get a sense of um, his clothing and the lighting. And I just went for it, um, started painting some pool um, tables. One thing you probably noticed, which I, I didn't actually notice until right towards the end of the painting, was that the pool tables don't have any pockets. Um, that's actually not a mistake. It's a, it's apparently it's a different type of um, of a pool table and a different type of game that you play. But um, I actually add a pocket to it later. But I kind of went in with just the colours of the walls, um, colours of the tables being the sort of prominent um, drawers, and obviously Michael Jackson in that kind of um, sort of third quarter of the image just to add that depth in the distance and add Anya in the foreground. One thing I'm actually quite pleased about with this image is I didn't have uh, a reference for the positions of the characters. Um, and that's and that's not really a gloating thing at all. Or It's, it's just, it's you know, it's one of those things where I realise it, it can be done. It, you can paint without actually seeing a character in a position. It's harder, um, especially when you're thinking about how light can hit a figure or, you know, the proportions. Um, but I think it for me it kind of was a signifier that I'm improving that I've because I've used references before in my paintings and looked at stuff um, and I've done a lot of observing and I've, I've actually been doing a lot of lessons on Skillshare as well um, it, it's kind of for me is saying that that's doing something and it, there's actually there's been an outcome and I'm actually achieving something so it was quite quite nice to be able to, to paint these without having actual references of characters. My initial thought when I was painting was that I was going to get, um, as you know, I, you probably know I use my wife for a lot of the reference drawings. I was actually going to get my wife to stand in that position. Um, but I didn't end up doing it and it actually kind of worked out in the end. With not a whole lot of changing, uh, not a whole lot of uh, cutting things out and, and repositioning them, it kind of sort of just worked. So you can see, um, just I start with um, putting all the detail into Anya, obviously because she's the closest subject, so she has to have the most detail. Um, and one thing I was very confident about was where the lighting was coming uh, coming from in this painting. And I talk a lot about confidence um, in in these um, these walk walkthroughs because um, it is all about confidence to say that's where the shadow goes and not being sort of um, overthinking it really. And I think that's one thing I didn't I didn't do too much of with this painting. I sort of just went with it, didn't overthink it, and it and it just worked for me, and I was very happy with it actually. If you uh, remember in my last um, video, I was talking a little bit about getting the hands right um, on the do this in your style challenge. Um, in this one, I, I think I, I did a much better job of getting the hands right, uh, particularly the positions of the hands as well. Here's one of those moments where I think I've sat there just analysing the image as, a, as I often do. So I haven't probably seen me um, not doing a whole lot or nothing happening on screen, but that's probably because I'm just sitting back and looking, trying to see where I can um, where I can add detail, where I can probably lose some detail. The biggest thing about getting the shadow and lighting um, right is, is obviously depth, um, because particularly in the way I paint, it's all about getting a sense of form and getting a sense of shape. Um, the pool tables is actually particularly easy to do because it's, you know, they're, they're very uh, angular shapes it's all you know, rectangles. So it's very clear where the shadow's going to go and where the light's going to hit. But on the forms of the body, it's a lot more difficult. Um, so that's something that um, requires a lot more patience and, and um, just, just testing. bringing in some text here. One thing I do with, with text is I'll 
I'll bring it in as a as a um, a vector file. So well, not vector file as a vector layer. So I type the text in, but then I'll always paint over it just so that it matches the rest of the image. Um, because the last thing you need is it actually looking like um very sharp text over a very rough painting. So it wouldn't the styles wouldn't match up. Probably noticed there that the stick getting the stick straight was quite difficult. Um, that probably would have helped using um, you know, um, Photoshop to do what it does best and just like draw some straight lines. But um, I think I did try it earlier, but it's still it's still a little bit curved, and it's partly to do with me using the tablet on the desk and not being able to draw directly on the screen. Um, and my sometimes my stroke in certain angles goes curved, no matter how much I think I'm drawing straight it just curves so it's just something to be improved really here I'm drawing um, Michael Jackson's face trying to understand how his face works really and I, I did actually have a look at a lot of his uh, images beforehand to try and understand the shape of his cheeks and his smile and the, and the thing that actually defines his face which makes his face um, at least his 80s face should I say recognizable is is sort of his high cheekbones and a and a very very broad smile, um, so that was the main thing that I was sort of trying to get in there. And it does improve over time. It looks a, again, it looks a little bit like a doll, like a Ken doll here, um, mainly because of the eyes. But you'll notice when I get the eye like eyelids in properly and sort of, um, it's because he's smiling. I crinkle the eyes a little bit. It just looks much more lifelike. One thing I'd forgotten to do was add in some of the extra detail to Anya's jacket, so that's what I'm just doing here. Um, there's always a little hole in the back of the jacket, and there's these little two lights, and there's things on the arms as well, which I, I do sometimes. And if you've noticed, I do sometimes forget to paint in, and the jacket looks a little bit basic. Um, so I do need to remember to put in that detail next time. Um, slight bit of tweaking with uh, Michael Jackson's head there. I did say earlier that I don't do a whole lot of moving around of things, but I actually completely move the position of him where he's sitting to a bit more closer to the image, actually. So I just a bit of a disclaimer. Just work on the hair, work on the face. I mean, it worked out quite well, actually. I think just having a few observations of, um, you know, some of his, his photographs and, and um, just trying to figure out how his face looked was very helpful. Just trying to get the jacket right here. The one thing I realised halfway through is that that arm was, the more I started adding shading, that arm that's sort of hanging down, it felt a little bit wrong. And, and you'll see the more I start painting in the shading, it, it doesn't it doesn't work. The, the, the body almost looks like it's out of proportion or it's just, it's almost like he's dislocated his arm, so I do have to move that. Just getting the hands right here. Shading and lighting. You see, I work quite a bit on this arm here. The more I work on it, you'll see I completely get rid of it in a second. It's one thing you do realise when you're drawing, um, you know, people who have been, you know, like in this instance, Michael Jackson's been obviously dressed up by a stylist. You can see they've thought really hard about what he should wear. And there's a lot of thought into the colours and everything about and and there's a reason why it works. So when I'm painting it, it actually makes the, my life really easy because I'm just colour picking the colours on his shirt and bringing them over and using that as a really good reference. When I'm drawing a character just with my own costume, it's a lot harder to know what works, what colours work. Um, so that's why it's sometimes a really good reference to have. That's what I'm talking about. I completely move um, his his position over to. Looked like he's leaning on that table. I think at one point it looked like he was sitting in midair. So I need to bring him close to that table, add a bit of shadow, and he looks like he's leaning on the table there. Starting to add more detail to the to the actual table in the foreground as well. And what I actually do with that arm, you see I've got rid of it, is I, I put it in his pocket. So really it looks like the arm's not even there, um, but there's just the impression of it being there. And I think it works a lot, a lot better. The slight sort of reference to it there in the corner. And there you go. It's, it's, it's hardly anything you can see, but you can tell that there's something going on, that his hand's in his pocket and he's just sort of chilling. I like the position again, um, that he's sitting. It looks very relaxed, looks very natural. 
Um, and that's actually a very hard thing to achieve. Uh, so that's something I'm really pleased with, actually. Adding more detail to Anya's jacket here. And then, as you can see here, because it's a faraway character, I just quickly jot down a character in the distance just playing Paul. Um, again, very pleased with the, the fact that I got the position right. Um, for the most part, um, a little bit of tweaking, but no reference here, just sort of went with it. Very generic denim shirt, black jeans. Um, I think this is a guy, so I'd call that a man bun. Or a top knot. And then just getting him playing pool in the distance there, just trying to straighten out his pool cue. <laughs> the pool cue looks completely bent there. Um, I'm sure I do straighten that pool cue out in a, in a bit. Adding some of the highlights to the table, because the wood is, if you see on the, the reference on the right, you can see that the wood has a shine to it, because obviously the light is glowing. There's me putting the pocket in. After the revelation of why, is he, why have these tables got no pockets. And then adding the detail for the lights in the top there. Getting the angle right was a difficulty on these lights. Um, I'm still not sure if I've got the angle completely right, whether they, they should be, whether I should see more underneath the light or not. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it gives the impression. And that's, and that's a lot about what my paintings are. It's more about giving the impression than being completely 100% accurate. Um, and that's that's not a cop out. Um, I still want to get, you know, fairly accurate so you can get what it is. But and I don't want it to be completely out of proportion. But um, I think one thing I'm trying to spend time on is it, I'm spending time on not spending too much time on, on over perfecting things, if that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to work on laying down an impression of something so that people could see what it is without it being exactly looking like what it needs to look like. Had the idea for this little arcade machine in the background, which I think was a really nice touch. Um, while the wall and everything was nice, I, I was planning on making everything look quite smoky in the room, like um, uh, um, in, in the reference on the right. But actually, um, I went with this machine on the back instead because um, I thought it just needed, there was something missing from the image. Um, and I think there was a bit of, it, it lacked that depth. And in the actual music video, you see there's a lot of depth behind him there, especially when the camera moves around. And I've just put a flat wall there, so I needed to add detail. So you can see I brought in some of my old images, some of my early um, Photoshop stuff that I used to do. And I brought those in. That's kind of the, the image on the, the Retrowave image on the machine there. So it's a game called Retrowave, apparently. Bit of a throwback. adding the glow um, and that and that actual machine actually ends up casting a bit of a glow on the side of uh, Michael Jackson's uh, body as well so it adds a really nice touch and a bit of a sort of another focal point for the image I'm not so sure if it's uh, uh, you know sometimes you wonder whether something in the background is stealing the attention but actually I think Anya's Anya's um, uh, character in the foreground actually grabs your attention first and then everything else sort of is secondary I think then it's Michael Jackson then it's that guy in the far distance and I think the the the, the machine and, and obviously all these posters that I've brought in are just decor really aren't they just to add a bit of depth to everything so all of these by the way are all my own images that I've done um, so I'm just roughly now painting over the top to make them look like to make them look painterly for a start but also make them look like they belong on the wall um try not to have any too sharp edges on there because um there's no real sharp edges on the, anywhere else on the painting it's very very rough so i need to make sure that nothing of the images that i brought in is is um very sharp also pushing it all the way into the distance as well so i'm putting a bit of fade on there using the um uh my dodger, my airbrush dodger, to just add a lot of color dodge to the um, image, just to get that depth and get that glow and just bring it all to life, really. Taking it into Photoshop Raw. So what I do is I, I combine all the layers into a, a convert into a smart object, and then I, I play around with usually the sharpening, the texture, and I play around with some of the color profiles as well. Maybe a little bit of uh, vibrancy and saturation as well. Sometimes I add grain, not a lot though. Adding a colour lookup table because sometimes that can add something to it. 
There you go. Adding my little signature in there. We're pretty much done. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. I was really proud of this image. Really, really enjoyed making it as well. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.